This section is about exponents. So write an exponential function. So an exponential function looks like this. y equals a b to the x. Where a is your initial amount or your y-intercept. And then b is your growth factor. So, if b is greater than 1, it's exponential growth. If b is between 0 and 1, then it's decay, so it's decreasing. So, write an exponential function to model each situation. Find the value of each after 5 years, the nearest dollar. So, a $12,500 car depreciates 9% each year. So I'm going to do y equals, my initial amount is 12500 And if I'm depreciating, it means it's going down 9%. So if everything is starting at 100% and you're going down 9%, that's actually going to be 91%. So it's an exponential decay because it's going down. So I need to write 91% as a decimal. So it's 0.91 to the x power. And then to do the second part, you would just plug in 5 in for x in your calculator. So this is decay because the growth factor is between 0 and 1 and it's depreciating. So second one, a baseball card bought for $50 increases 3%. So again, everything starts at 100%, and if you're increasing, it's going to be 103%. And now you need to write that as a decimal, so it's 1.03 to the x power. And for the second part, you can plug in 5 for x. So this would be growth, because it's increasing, and it's greater than 1. Okay, next part, use properties of exponents. So, if you have this... 2, this whole thing is being multiplied by itself twice. That means you need to square or multiply or take each exponent and multiply it. So this is going to be 10 squared and then a to the 6 because 3 times 2 is 6. Because if I wrote this out the long way, this would be 10 a cubed times 10 a cubed. 10 times 10 is 10 squared a cubed, a cubed is a to the 6. So now I'm going to simplify this as 100 a to the 6. And then over here, when you have negative exponents, you can you need to switch where they are as far as the numerator and, positive, and denominator and make them positive. So x to the negative 2 is in the numerator. That's going to turn into x squared in the denominator y negative 3 is in the numerator, this is going to turn into y to positive 3 in the numerator. This y squared doesn't have a negative exponent, so it just stays. So you have nothing on the bottom or top, so you need to put a 1 on the top. So now you're going to have 1 over x squared, and this is going to be y to the fifth. You add the exponents. So if you have y to the a to the b power, you multiply. If you have y to the a times y to the b, you add the exponents. Okay, then the next one, with these parentheses, you need to take everything to the negative third power. So I do 2 to the negative third, x to the negative third, all over 3 to the negative third. So remember, when you have negative exponents, these are all negative, you need to move them so 2 to the negative 3 is on the top, it goes to the bottom. x to the negative 3 is on the top, it goes to the bottom and make it a positive exponent. 3 to the negative 3 is on the bottom, it goes to the top. And then at the end, you can actually simplify 3 to the 3rd is 27, 2 to the 3rd is 8, and then x cubed stays how it is. 
and then over here. Some people, some people switch it, these right away if the whole thing is negative, but I don't. It doesn't matter how you do it. I'm just going to distribute each negative 2 here. Don't forget to do the bottom 2. 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. And then I'm going to flip them. So it's going to be 4 squared x squared. And then x to the 10th is on the top. So if you have 10 x's on the top and 2 on the bottom, you're going to be left with 8 x's on the top. Because I did 10 minus 2. And then 4 squared is 16, so there's my answer. And then the last one, you're going to do negative 2, keep it in parentheses. Okay, this is a negative. You have to make sure to, that it's in parentheses. You have to keep it in parentheses. It's going to make a difference. And this is going to be x squared. This y cubed does not get squared because it's not in parentheses. So this just stays as y cubed. So negative 2 squared is 4, so it's 4x squared over y cubed. And then on the bottom, without a calculator, you solve for x. So use properties of exponents. So 10 to what power is 1 over 100? Well, I know that 10 to the second power is 100. But this 100 is in the denominator, so this 2 would have to be negative. So it's 10 to the negative 2 equals 1 over 100. So x is negative 2. In the second one, I can write 5 to the negative 3 as 1 over 5 cubed. So 1 over 5 cubed has to equal 1 over x. In this case, since the, since the numerators are the same, the denominators have to be the same. So 5 cubed has to be equal to x. So x has to equal to 125. And then the next set, negative 2 to what power is negative 1 eighth? So because there's a 1 in the numerator and 8 in the denominator, I know it has to be a negative exponent. So what exponent power of negative 2 is going to give you a negative 8? That's going to be 3. Because negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 is negative 8. So if this is a positive 3 and it negative 8 is the numerator, then x has to be a negative 3. So let's check it. So I would do, to simplify this part, I would do a negative 2 on the top, or on the bottom, and 1 on the top with a positive 3, because this exponent changes to a positive. So negative 2 cubed is negative 1 eighth and this is the same as this. So the answer is x equals negative 3. And then the last one, 4 to the negative 4, so I'm going to write it as 1 over 4 to the 4. So 4 to the 4th is the same thing as 4 squared twice. So this is just 16 times 16, which is 256. So x equals 256.